Our very own Brian Hackney explains how the rain is forcing the space agency to make some changes to an already complicated mission. Three, two, one. Boosters in ignition. After liftoff, we rise together of the biggest successful rocket so ever built. Now 30 seconds into the flight, Artemis One. At a journey that took it farther from Earth than any human-capable craft on record. Orion is ready to come home. The sooner we can get them back to land, the sooner I can get my data. Burn is underway. Everything so far um, up till now ha has been great. It was a good burn. But the most perilous part of the trip is about to begin. You've got to point this thing in the right direction. You've got to separate the service module. You've got to deploy the heat shields. You've got to deploy the parachutes. It's got to land with inside of the recovery ship. What could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> well, when you put it that way, you're going the most perilous part of the trip is about to begin. 30 seconds away from the expected start of the burn. The return power flyby on Monday set Orion out of lunar orbit, coasting tail to sun back to Earth. The USS Portland has been practicing for recovery off San Diego, but our weekend storms have sent them 300 miles uprange to a new splashdown site off Baja. After coasting for four days, a perilous sequence begins Sunday morning. First, 30 minutes before landing, the service module separates from the crew module. Then, the world's largest heat shield hits entry interface at 25,000 miles an hour. The shield too big to ever be tested on Earth. It hits a temperature half that of the surface of the sun, 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And then... Hey, there it is. There it is. Just like in the Apollo program, drogue parachutes will open, and for the first time in 50 years, a capsule will have returned from the moon. If it all works, we'll find out at 9.40 Sunday morning. I'm science editor Brian Hackney, KPIX 5.